My, my aim today is to approach five and six dimensions. Um, so last time we did three and four. Is this legible? Or is it too faint? Nobody says anything? It's too faint. Yes. <laughs> M theory. Uh, so last time, what did we see that? Um, the 3 dn equals 4. The fourth theory has some kind of the holomorphic twist that uh, Tudor talked about today. Can be written as something whose equations of motion are maps like this. You know, there are holomorphic here and locally constant here. Then there's two further twists the A twist. B twist, where the equations of motion look like maps from C cross R, mapping to the Ram stack. And here, we just put the word Ram in somewhere else. So this is really topological in three directions. So this is uh, rosansky witten theory. Um, no one to sure for this one is not so good. At some point, Davide suggested calling it twisted rosansky witten theory, but then would one would have the twisted rosansky witten twist, which is not so. Uh, so. Okay, and we, we also saw again as Peter was explaining how you can think about monopole operators by thinking about some analog of the Athen Grassmannian here. <coughs> So 40, n equals 2. The first one is the holomorphic twist, which can be written as the maps from C2 slash 1 to this quotient. And again, there are two further twists we can consider. So Donaldson. Or we, instead, we just map from C2 to the RAM stack. And it's the same kind of story, which I explained last time. This odd direction, we can view it as a map from C2 to the shifted tangent bundle here by Hom tensor adjunction, Hom adjunctions between various mapping spaces. And then the shifted tangent bundle always has a deformation into the RAM stack. Um, and we always find that whenever we get something mapping to a RAM stack, that's the same as the RAM stack of the mapping space. So that tells us the theory is about counting things, you know, counting such maps. So there was the other twist. We call this after Kapustin, who first studied it. Half twist, where we turn this odd direction, it, we view this odd direction as really being dz. So we get c bar cross r2 um, to v mod g. Okay, so it's here. It's the equations of motion will be, for example, in the pure gauge case, the equations of motion will be some bundle on this space, which is holomorphic in this direction and flat in this direction. We also thought about. Um, Okay, great. So I want to say something more about this our description of line operators in a minute. But let me just remark. Oh, yes, thank you. Okay. Oh, because I mean, why, why, why am I no, like, considering? So So you, you want to view it as a small deformation of a theory where I'm mapping holomorphic maps into V mod G, 
and then doing some kind of differential forms in that space. So the small deformation is, I mean, the Duram stack is, is not, the Duram stack knows about the underlying, yeah, in the algebraic geometry world, the Duram stack knows about the underlying complex manifold. It's, it's not, it's not. I often think of the Duram stack as like, maybe I'm confusing Duram and Becky. I often think of it as yeah. like collapsing completely down this sort of zero dimension. Yes. No, you're, yeah, you're absolutely. Absolutely right. Yeah, this is this is a really subtle point, and I think my notation obscures the subtlety, because when I write some kind of four two to ram, like from the source, these these distinctions don't really matter because here we're looking at you know flat G bundles. They're the same as local systems. You know, for these kinds of flat G bundles, as long as you don't talk about singularities and D modules, from the source point of view, it doesn't really matter. But on the target, there really is a distinction between like the kind of constant simplicial set target this topological space and the Duram stack. Um, yeah, and, and like the distinction, one way to see the distinction is you want to view it as a small deformation of the double stack. So the thing, I guess, would be like further away? Maybe. Maybe. It's, more, it's only it's a much more brutal procedure. Does that make sense to you? Know? Okay, so let's think about dimensional reduction for a second. We want to see that dim dimensional reduction of this guy should give us this 3D n if it's 4. So suppose we take this theory, this one here, on a circle. Well, this is really faint. Can, can people really see anything? No. no. <laughs> I mean, I, I was having trouble myself. Really <laughs> stop. Possibly because I don't have my glasses. Oh, this one's better. Consider on C D bar cross four ram cross a circle, then mapping to D mod G, and we can reduce to three D. Three D on a topological circle. Since it's a topological circle, as Tudor was explaining, we don't really care about the size of it or anything. Um, there's, some, there's some minor subtleties. It's not. So the way, the, way, the way this will work is, in general, kind of maps from S from 1 to RAM to some target. This is this derived loop space that the David Benz V and David Nadler have written kind of very nice things about. These are almost maps from the spectrum of the cohomology. It's one to x. The point is, this Duram guy functions on this Duram guy as a cohomology. So this is the affinization that uh, uh, David's have explained. Um, And so the spectrum of the cohomology we can just view as a super C0 slash 1, because we're going to ignore Z mod 2 gradients. So, so the reduction will replace a topological circle by C0 slash 1. So we get, indeed, bar across C1 slash 1 to V mod G, kind of as desired. So you can go a little bit further. Um, if you reduce equivariantly, the equivariant guy turns on this D by D epsilon here, makes it into the Duram stack. So equivariant reduction will give us kind of the A twist. And there's another kind of reduction one might do, which I might discuss later. It's kind of the o omega background, um, which will give us the B twist. Okay, so last last time, um, just kind of one brief remark I should have said last time, we we saw that line operators. in the 40 n equals 2 pure gauge. 
of b equals 0 should be equivariant coherent sheaves of the Alfen Gross Manning. So at some stage, I was trying to think about line operators from a different point of view in terms of perturbation theory. And I came to the conclusion that if we look at the Wilson lines, on the other hand, from like some other work I did, we identified with categories of modules for the Yangian of G plus G star. So therefore, we have the kind of conjecture that coherent sheaves supported at the origin, this guy, is equivalent to the categories of the category of finite dimensional modules for the Yangian G plus G star as monoidal categories. So the semi I mean, square zero extension, this acts on this. This factor is abelian, yeah. You have geo join epsilon 1, epsilon squared, if you like. So, monoidal categories. Well, here are the monoidal structures given my convolution. And in fact, there's going to be a little more. And we draw my line operator. Here's my, my kind of two-dimensional plane. So, so the monoidal structure on line operators is given by kind of the OPE in the topological plane, or two. There's also the OPE in the holomorphic C. So I, I did some work about kind of studying what these structures one finds in this way. And this gives us, this means that you expect that this category has a certain or matrix with spectral parameter. Sorry, this is very cryptic. You know, if, if one wants to formulate in algebra, suppose this category was modules over a hop algebra. Suppose one wanted to formulate what this OP in the complex plane is, that will be an or matrix with spectral parameter satisfying the Baxter equation. So we expect that kind of structure to appear here. So what you find is you expect that the OPE in the C direction matches up to a structure on this category, the star mod, which comes from the OR matrix. Um, so, some, I mean, coherent sheaves in the Affin Grassmannian seems like a very hard thing to study. Yes? Uh, what about the tooth operator? Yes, I don't, yeah, this is a good, good question. I was going to say next. So, it's, I mean, the way you come up with this Yangian is you look at the local operators in perturbation theory, the gauge theory. And from that, you produce the Yangian. Because we're doing perturbation theory, we're not going to get the tooth operators. But the strategy would be you fix in a shift operator and then do perturbation theory near that singularity. That will give you some variant of the Yangian where instead of a tooth, in the presence of a tooth operator, instead of getting something like this, G star T, we find some kind of universal, so instead of, we find a universal enveloping algebra of some subalgebra. Kind of 
haven't totally pinned it down, but you know, maybe when t equals zero, it lives in a Borel or, or Levy or this kind of thing. So their, their dream would be to build this whole category from representations of a bunch of algebras, which are kind of Yangian-like, include some structures gluing them together. And then you take the veil invariance. But that's, uh, that kind of construction would be the 4D analog of these calculations of the monopole operators in 3D. The, you calculate the monopole operators in 3D, 3D first by, by working near the Cartan. You find explicit formulas, and then you take the veil invariance. I want to lift this to 40. Oh, I didn't know this. Yes. Oh, I didn't know you guys studied studied the uh, this kind of the half twist of the n equals four theory. <laughs> <laughs> but it does does it have it uh, some kind of description in these terms in terms of like a bunch of Youngians? Uh, wait, okay, so next I want to move to 5D. Can I, can I erase this now, or is this not visible to anybody anyway? <laughs> well, I think it's visible to most people. Yes. <laughs> so, well, 40n equals 4, let me briefly mention what this looks like. Instead of, well, this is like going to be some kind of mapping space to the cotangent bundle of the Lie algebra mod G. <coughs> now, the cotangent bundle of the Lie algebra you can check that this is the same as maps from C2 slash 3 BG. This is the n equals 4 thing. What's the point? These two extra odd directions I introduced by this usual Hom tensor adjunction mean we have to kind of two, two extra odd tangent factors, and they're forced to commute. So that's hmm. So, uh, so as I was trying to advertise yesterday, so Phil Sang and Chris are working on that. Uh, I mean, you, you can see these various twists that could be seen written right down in terms of just some vector fields in the space. And Phil Sang and Chris are um, working on rederiving re the relationship between Langlands, the Langlands program and n equals four gauge theory from this, this point of view. I'm sure their paper will be done soon. I hope. <laughs> Um, so next we go to 5D, 5D n equals 2. Well, what's the idea? We've seen that every time we have an odd direction, that has the potential to come from a topological circle in one higher direction, just because of the cohomology of the circle is C U join epsilon, where epsilon is an odd parameter. So that is indeed what we find. We find that the 5D n equals 2 Young Mills, this guy has a twist, twist, which is described by, by maps from C2 slash 2 R RAM just to the class one space. So the, what I want to do today is think about some further twists of this theory and see how they relate to various things that one expects them to relate to. So for example, cohomology of incident moduli spaces, 
um, rosansky witten theory would target the Hitchin system, this, this kind of thing. Is there a version of this for um, n equals one story where you put some general representations more than other representations? Yes. Um, how does that work? I think the n equals one, th one story is just like C2 cos order ram to the symplectic quotient. Like this is the n equals one, I think. You know, this is, this is three dimensional. So. And of course, you can also see it lifts to six dimensions when it's holomorphic Rosansky width, which is uh, n equals one in six dimensions. Okay, so twists of the five dn equals two. If the well, here we've already taken the holomorphic twist, so we've taken our original theory and took its Q-cohomology with respect to some very non-generic supercharge of square zero. So the remaining supercharges, supercharges, in other words, kind of the, the Q-cohomology of the n equals two supersymmetry algebra will act on this kind of is this VG just by some vector fields. So they're the vector fields we've been discussing before. So namely kind of D by D epsilon I and epsilon I d by dzj. Of course, as we expect, these commute to translations, which is what supersymmetry, supersymmetry algebra should do. OK, so there's also or symmetry. The remaining or symmetry it will be SL2, which rotates the two odd directions. So what are the twists we can, we can consider? So the A twist would be kind of d by d epsilon 1. It might as well be, be d, d, d of epsilon 2, but by the or symmetry, we, we can always make it, make it like this. So as usual, as before, this means we get something like um, maps c2 slash 1 cos or to the Durand stack of I can put the ram here or drum here. In particular, it's a theory which is going to count. This odd direction is not super important, so we find a theory which counts. It counts homomorphic bundles, homomorphic slash flat bundles on C2 cross R. So I want to come back to this A twist in just a second. And we'll see that the Hilbert space, the Hilbert space of this 5D Young Mills in the presence of this A twist is the cohomology of incident moduli space. Um, what else do we have? We have the B twist. Or we take the supercharge, which is epsilon 1 d by dz1 plus epsilon 2 
d by dz2 So what does this do? So really, the epsilon i's have become dz i's. And we, we find that the equations of motion are maps from c2 to ram or ram to bg, i local systems. or 5. This is just the 5D analog of Chern-Simons. And intermediate, there's also a kind of a bunch of interesting intermediate twists. P1 of other twists. Lambda d by d epsilon 1 plus mu um, epsilon 2, say, d by dz2. This is a p1 of supercharges. 1 mu equals 0. It's the a-twist. Uh, when lambda equals 0, we get a mixed polymorphic topological twist which will give us maps from OR3 across C2 slash 1 to uh, BG. As we'll, <coughs> by putting this on the other side, we'll find that this is exactly Rosansky Witten theory. We target the moduli bundles here because of the Hitchin space. Pardon? C1, yes, thank you. And one lambda mu not equal to 0, it's topological. And very interesting. But I don't think it's been studied in physics before, um, unless somebody can correct me. I, the physics way to say this, these intermediate guys is you take the n equals 1 comma 1 theory in six dimensions and reduce it to 5D in some equivariant way. <coughs> okay. So let's for, for the moment, let's focus on the A-twist. Remember, this was going to give us maps from C to 1 cross R to BG to RAM. So let's first think about what's the phase space. <coughs> if say X is a complex surface. <coughs> With say for simplicity C1 of X equals zero, which is not necessary. Well, if X is a complex surface, we're going to get some kind of maps from X cross C0 slash <coughs> 1 cross R, the RAM, to BG. And if you remember, the phase space describes the equations of motion near a compact manifold of co-dimension 1. So we find that the equations of motion are, well, this flat direction in R isn't really going to do anything for us. Um, So on G X RAM. And then we're going to take some kind of odd tangent model of this. From the one the, the odd direction introduces the odd tangent model. So if you think about it, this is the same as a cotangent model. X to RAM. Um, up to, you know, if, if we're just not worrying about Z grading versus Z mod 2 grading. So we find that the Hilbert space, Z of X, is the cohomology of instanton moduli space. Good, okay. Um, 
thought I was going too fast, so. So the, this 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 epsilon fuzz. Oh, 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 oh yes, but this 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 is a, this is an open parameter anyway, and x is a complex surface, not a curve. Oh, sorry, it's, okay. I, sorry. <laughs> complex. Sur yes, I did right. Yeah. No, that and Nick's comment was very good, but I would still worry that you know suppose that we just had like one g of x to ram or something. That's not symplectic, but but anyway, it seems wrong to think it's just cohomology as the Hilbert space. You'd want to polarize it. This is why I like doing it like this. I, the, the way I always think about it is um, that a ram guy is some deformation of the Dalbo guy. So the Dalbo version. If like before we do the A-twist, the A-twist, we have um, the odd tangent bundle of, say, the odd tangent, the odd tangent bundle <coughs> this odd tangent, sorry, hold around there. This odd tangent bundle deforms into the RAM stack. So this is the same as the cotangent bundle. This, has, this is even symplectic. So its odd tangent bundle is odd symplectic, which means I can identify this odd tangent bundle with the cotangent bundle. <coughs> Sorry, this, this, these kinds of things get ridiculous, right? Mm -hmm. Pardon? This equal means no, no, no. This, this equal is just literally equal because Well, our odd tangent and cotangent bundle are the same for a manifold which is odd symplectic. So this is even symplectic. This is K3. So this shift to tangent bundle is like by AKIC kind of thing. It's odd symplectic. So we find like before the A twist. So before the A twist, so we find Z of X is going to be in our differential forms on bond G of X before a twist. And what we find is the a twist introduces the Ram differential. OK. Is the product just a cut product? Or is it? it the, the product? Well, no, it's just going to be a vector space because it's, it's a Hilbert space of our theory. So um, I haven't described structures you might find out yet. That's right, yeah, which is. You know. Exactly, yes, exactly right. Um, because this is to do with twisting in the sense, this is often talk about changing the action of the Lorentz group. Um, because if we didn't have C1 of x equals 0, to put it on, the, on this manifold, one of these odd parameters would have to live in the canonical bundle of x. And I didn't want to explain that point. The point is that the way I've, I've written down the theory the way I wrote down the theory on flat space is equivariant on SU2 or SL2. I haven't described the GL2 action, but GL2 action kind of requires some choices. Great. So everybody happy with this? So we expect, for example, the partition function of, on X cross S1 to be the Euler characteristic. G C 
So the next thing I want to describe is what might local operators in this 5D A twist look like? Um, Well, before I tell you what we think they might look like, let's just write down what they might, what they will do for us. Suppose I take my, this is supposed to be just some drawing of x. I'm going to draw a picture that David drew. This is the real line. This is my x. I put a local operator. Well, what we, what we find is that local operators should be some kind of E5 algebra, which act, act on the cohomology of fungi of x. But more, they don't just act in an arbitrary way. They're heck correspondences. They change it at one point. Changing instanton. Because we're doing the A twist, which is a really a five dimensional topological twist. So even though kind of integrating well, it's, it is slightly heterogeneous topological because in one direction it's really like, in one direction it's topological. In the other direction it's topological because we're taking cohomology of moduli spaces. And when we do that, kind of, we can move things around. It doesn't really matter. Okay, so what's, well, what would, what would we expect this, this algebra to be? So here's the conjecture. Let's first do the case G equals C star. Then the local operators are, should be an E4, 5, should be that Gronowski Nakajima Heisenberg algebra. which acts in the cohomology. But rather, in other words, it looks like um, C generated by alpha n, n in Z. But it's an E5 version with um, Poisson bracket describing the E5 structure. Are given by it's the formula like n delta n psi. Is this the formula for the Heisenberg algebra commutator? Get the constant right. Okay. Yes, exactly. It's the E five and Velcro. Well, it's even more too graded. <coughs> so, mo moreover, if we if we kind of work equivalently with respect to rotations in C two, as Tudor was saying, this really makes us an actual non-commutative guy. Become E one, and then we get we should get. Of the honest Heisenberg algebra. What is the 
no, it acts on the equivariant cohomology of the ensemble modulized bits, which of course it does, right, by the equivariant version of the Gronowski Nakajima construction. Okay, what about the non abelian case? Here I'm going to stick my neck out a little bit, but I hope it's the right answer. Well, you take this chiral homology. And the chiral, I was going to explain this maybe next time. This, if I take this E5 algebra, if I take its chiral homology, I really do get the Heisenberg algebra built from that surface because the chiral homology introduces a factor of the cohomology of the surface, as you write <coughs> out. Like, what's the chiral homology of an E5 envelope is an E1 envelope. So, the, the construction lazy, I think, it, it, it before that. Yes, but it was acting on the cohomology of in some modulized space. But so that's really so we're some, we're, we have something which assigns to a four manifold of vector space in the cohomology. So that's really part of the five. So what's a non abelian case? Conjecture. And I maybe hope. Is that local operators are equal to an E5 analog of the affine W algebra? Okay. This is this is what AGT is. AGT is really the statement of what local operators in the 5D. Yeah, those are. You look puzzled, David. Three sphere. Well, I mean, this is certainly going to be something that will act once you make it equivariant. It will act on the cohomology of the modulus space. And I think it also fits with the sixty picture. I don't know. Now, I, I remember this picture you told me about the three sphere. So, I don't reconcile things. So, again, we make it like a variant. With respect to kind of rotations of C2, of C2, and this should be, um, what should this be? Of course, this should be the kind of W algebra acts on the cohomology of equivariant, it's like an equivariant cohomology of instant moduli space. And if as constructed by, by well, the conjecture, I suppose, by AGT, and Malika Kinkov, uh, Braverman, Oh, God, again, I, I forgot one of the authors. Braverman, somebody in Nakajima. Okay. Winkelberg is appearing a lot. I mean, some of the. Did I misspell it? Yeah. What, what, what seems to. I mean, what seems to be true is like. The, the you know, BPS part of supersymmetric field theory just is geometric representation theory. So. Yeah. Am I doing for time? Uh, And, and anybody remember when I started? You've got between 10 and 15 minutes. 10 and 15, okay. So maybe I'll, maybe I'll have to do 16 next time. So, so the other thing I wanted to talk about was another part of this diagram we've written here. Did you write this, David? 
is that we should find the lozanski witten theory on Hitchin moduli space. So why is that? Let's consider kind of the, again, remember we had this kind of VG. This is the, the minimal twist, the smallest twist you can make. And we figured out if we turn <coughs> one of these epsilons into a dz in one of the two directions, we get c1 slash 1 plus r3 bg. Now, now I'm going to introduce the point, um, the point that was raised a minute ago about why, I'm pretty sorry, I've forgotten your name. Arno. Um, I don't know raised a minute ago, but why, um, why in this story I said K3 surface? That was because I was lazy. So, so really, this, the epsilon appearing here is dz. So it's better. Think about uh, this as the, we have the odd tangent bundle of C cross or 3 gram dg. These are the same, but they're not the same in a way of covariantly under SO2. So now let's make our surface compact. So, so let's replace C by sigma, kind of a Riemann surface, then we find Ram cross pi t sigma. This is the object also known as the double stack to Bg, this mapping space equals maps or three ram to um, Higgs <coughs> G sigma. So I Rosansky Witten theory on the Hitchin space as we expect. Now, if we further deform, if we take this, if we you know, do the full B twist of the 5D theory, we give us Rosansky Witten theory on G local systems on C. Any any questions? Uh, I probably should have asked this earlier, but it seems like when you're when you're writing down all these mapping spaces, like you're sort of when you insert like R three, you're implicitly like you're implicitly saying like the factorization algebra in this variable sort of so you can later replace R three with like some free manifold if you want to. Exactly. Yes. So you're, you're sort of specifying some field theories on a point without explicitly telling us how to. Well, you're implicitly telling us how to extend them. Sort of. Ab absolutely. Yeah. So this. I mean, just because all, all of these mapping spaces are, you know, I'm writing them just really for notational convenience and just writing them as bundles on flat space. But like, it's kind of clear how to turn a bun, hol, the moduli polymorphic bundles in flat space into the moduli polymorphic bundles on a surface. So, um, so I suppose I, sh I should stop, but maybe I wanted to point out, I didn't tell you how one might think about stuck in these algebras of local operators in 5D gauge theory. So maybe I'll say something about this. And this relates to work of uh, 
Holy Cliff and some other people. Um, this is my idea for how this, how this should go. I have no, except for the abelian case, no idea if it's, an, if it's correct at all. David and I have just started discussing, trying to work this out a little bit. But um, we should express, express based out kind of on our three D kind of monopole discussion. Five D local operators in the A twist. We have the same picture. Here's like C two. is or we should expect it's a kind of equivariant homology. It's our homology of a stack of pairs of torsion free sheaves. on C2 with an isomorphism away from zero. Yeah, because I forgot to mention that we, we um, to make sense of all this stuff, we have to come back to either moduli space, moduli space of instantons. This is, this is likely this using the Ilmec compactification, but I like algebraic geometry, so I'm going to use the Kisiko compactification, which is sort of free Okay, so this is kind of this is like a two D version version of the Grossmannian. Um, so I mentioned some earlier work. So my based on the suggestion of uh, Josh Shadlin, is Josh here? Maybe not. He was one of my students. Um, another of my students, Vladimir Kotov, thought about this 2D Athen Grassmannian in the abelian case, which is you know, torsion free sheaves of rank one trivialized away from a point, the punctual Hilbert scheme. That, that homology is an E4 algebra, and he computed this E4 algebra in his thesis. Um, so since then, um, Emily Cliff and Mas is Masood involved with this project? Is, is Masood involved? And Kobe and Kranov? Yeah. <laughs> Kobe Kremnitzer. They've also been thinking about the same kind of, the similar kind of thing. You have this 2D Athen Grassmannian. And you've got the homology of this moduli space of torsion free sheaves trivialized away from a point. Well, you know, various different versions of that. And the, it's much harder, of course, if I do the high, higher dimensional version. Um, so I don't, think I don't think I have time to explain this right now. Here we've looked at the, the 2D analog of this double quotient. But the 2D analog of the Athen Grassmannian also makes, makes, an, uh, makes an appearance because that's just the same story with a Neumann boundary condition at the top. Neumann. Neumann means your bundle is trivial. I hope I'm getting this right. I think maybe this, you think of this as a line operator. And hopefully, we may say more about this tomorrow. This is also something that appears in the 60 theory. Um, so, tomorrow, my focus is going to be about explaining uh, boundary conditions for the 5 d theory, which appear by compactifying the 60 theory, C2 0 theory, in various ways. One of them is a Neumann, Neumann boundary condition, which appears here. Um, okay. I'll stop. Questions? Well, 
is I'm not sure what a Steinberg correspondence is, but the local operators I'm writing down, they're just like the most general thing you can write down. It's like the homology of the pairs of, you know, it's, it's essentially in this Abelian case, it's the homology of the square of the function of Hilbert scheme. That's all it is. Uh, yeah, I think it's, yeah, that's, I think if we'd explanation, maybe it's what the Steinberg is, but I think it's not going to be obvious that it's the fiber product of over, over some affinization. Right. Maybe it's true, but I mean, there's no, the affinization doesn't appear here, so I think maybe. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, I didn't know, maybe you could tell me, I didn't know this result was well known. Could you, maybe you could tell me a reference for this? I see. Okay. Well, that's a good point. But, but no, it's it's not affinization. The vacuum moduli space, I don't think, will be won't be functions of. It's not the case that the vacuum moduli space is in some moduli space. The vacuum moduli space here is much more subtle. It's like spectrum of the uh, It's like opers. That's what the vacuum moduli space is. It's a spectrum of local operators. Local operators is the commutative W algebra of opers. Maybe that's a check. Because I hope this is the correct physicist. <laughs> 